Another great sheriff sit down here presented by our community credit union with Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury and Under Sheriff Travis Adams. We had um, the end of the legislative session just a few weeks ago. And Casey, you and I have been talking about this, well, for about two years now uh, on some major changes that came down from the legislature regarding policing and law enforcement and how perhaps uh, the pendulum swang too far one way. And in this last session, it's starting to eke back perhaps towards the middle. And I kind of want to talk about what your impressions uh, in as a law enforcement officers, but if you wish to, personal, I suppose, can share with what you had heard come out of the legislative uh, and what was signed by the governor. And will those changes help rectify what happened in a previous session? Well, I think it's going to help. Obviously, uh, it, it became very apparent to the sheriffs and chiefs across the state that there was a, a very much of a knee-jerk reaction to things that were happening across the nation. And they felt like they had to do something, so they just started doing things. And, and the law enforcement staff were trying to explain that some of these things that you're doing, you're not paying attention to, and it's not going to go well. Oh, yes, it is. And, and they ramrodded these things through, and it took a little bit of time to start to see that it wasn't the best fix for things, and, it, and things really started to get out of control. And so the legislature decided they would take a look at these uh, uh, bills that went through again and, and make some changes to those, which they have started to do, and it's helping. Travis is very good at this. He sits down and reads all these and knows all the House bills and everything. I just know them by descriptor, not so much what House bill it is, but I let Travis talk about what he's been working on with that. Uh, let's, let's go back to the prior legislative session, those initial changes then, and then what you've seen in this session that is, that is coming back kind of to a more middle ground, I guess. Yeah, so there were some some major changes in the last legislative session that had to do with um, use of force, when you can use it, what the requirements were, um, when you could detain people, uh, when you could use force to detain people, and I don't want to get too technical about probable cause and reasonable suspicion on all of those things, but um, th- there were a lot of changes made that probably sounded good in the legislature, like they might be a, might be a good idea, but the practical application of them made it so that it was extremely difficult to do even the most basic law enforcement functions, the ability to simply detain somebody uh, while you're conducting an investigation and some of the other things were effectively stripped away and made it so that um, uh, people were very frustrated because often we would just have to wave at people and watch them walk away rather than take any action and that was simply a function of the legislative changes. Um, Pursuits was another area where they extremely curtailed our ability. And then finally the last one is they had a uh, restriction on what they termed military equipment but it had the unattended effect of reducing taking away all our less lethal tools, essentially the things that we would use to prevent um, having to use a firearm by having some intermediary um, use of force. And so those were probably the big restrictions that came about the last time around. There are, I don't know, about 39, 40 legislative districts, two representatives, one state senator on each. How many Um, And you don't have to speak for the whole state, I suppose, but how many of those legislators on it at least one time did a ride along with you guys or ride alongs with your counterparts in other counties to see what you do on a daily basis and how those laws were impacted? I tell you, I I would really speak uh, highly of our um, legislators from our district here. Um, As you know, uh, particularly Dan Griffey is an emergency service worker in the fire department. He is out there and he sees at times when we have somebody that has a a, a mental health issue going on or something where we need to to move somebody or manipulate them so they don't walk down the middle of the road or something like that when that kind of stuff was taken away. Our legislators here were very good about, I think, in what they voted for and supported and what they didn't support in the legislature. So um, it it wasn't a function of anything uh, of of our uh, representatives or our senator. Um, but as you know, and I keep saying this, and they're going to love me for it, but King County has such an influence on the state of Washington because the population is there. 
and and it does for the whole state. You know, talk to people from Eastern Washington; they're very unhappy about that one county gets to control almost everything else that goes on. And, and uh, there's a lot of you know from the, a lot of population, and, and there's a lot of control from that that ne not necessarily everybody else agrees with. But our our representatives and our senator here did an outstanding job for our community. It is, is my opinion on that, and they have been out. Dan, of course, is out all the time as a emergency first responder, emergency service worker. Um, I know that even recently, in the last couple of years, with our two newest uh, commissioners, they've actually even been out in the cars with us. So that's a big difference, and I, I appreciate you bringing that up because until you've ridden out there and understand what's happening or how quickly things change, you're en route to one thing, and a higher priority call comes out at the other end of the county. You've got to change directions and go, and, it, and it's tough decisions to make. But when you've been out there and seen that, it really does help your understanding of, of why we're speaking up on the issues that we are. And I would add that uh, I have absolutely no idea how how many of those legislators are out there actually riding around in their jurisdictions. I will say, however, that they did hear very loud and very clear from uh, everybody from mayors to city and county councils and citizens in this last year that the legislative changes that they made last year were were too much they went too far and they did um, work pretty much this entire legislative session simply on trying to fix the things that they had uh, had done last year and so um, whether or not they whether or not they were out there writing they certainly did hear loud and clear about the problems that were created and Casey you used to be the the chair of the uh, WASPEC right the Washington State Everybody Police and Washington, Sheriff yes and so do you get the sense that um, mem memos of understanding or strongly worded letters from that agency to the governor or to legislators helps in the process or are they are our legislators making these decisions listening to their constituents perhaps more and those folks may not as well have an opportunity or an understanding I, I, I've signed a lot of those letters as the president of WASPIC and the president for, of the State Sheriff's Association it's been eight years across the, both those uh, organizations serving on those the legislator at one time in the early years um, paid attention a lot more and would contact more at that time the Sheriff's and Police Chiefs Association ask how will this affect and would discuss those things. I think what happened last time as I said it was a knee-jerk reaction all of a sudden things are going on national we have to show that we're doing something and a lot of it's political I have to show that I'm doing something so I can get more votes and stay in office so I'm gonna do this and there wasn't a whole lot of checking going on back and forth with this with then as things progressed and as Travis said as the communities and the citizens started seeing you know the havoc release afterwards because of these laws and the stolen cars and the assaults and things going on all of a sudden as those mayors of those cities and those city councils started saying we got to fix this and they're coming to the police and saying, quite honestly we tried to tell you this was going to happen and now they've started to come back and listen a little bit closer and take some recommendations from WASPIC and sit down and I think they've um, sat down and mediated some of those issues going through the legislature and spoke back with us well what would work for you how 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 could we get closer together on the issues but it took it took that fallout to get us there and, and I think now we're going back to a more reasonable thought process of talking back and forth what would be best for the communities uh, with the legislators and and the uh, Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs. And then do you get the sense or is it even possible to have these enacted as in a, in a statewide level as we've talked in the past that you know King County versus Mason County versus you know Garfield County they're all so very different. Mm -hmm. um, is it doable to have different sets of Instruction, I guess, or laws, countywide or regionally within the state. Uh, you know, if there's a higher population base, if your if your county has a population of this, then here's how you do things. Or if I, I don't even know well, if that's I think, possible. I think the probably the best way to look at that is we've always had a uniform set of requirements. They're either established through RCW through law or they're established uh, by case law. Well, you know, liabilities that have been incurred based on actions that law enforcement has taken. And that gives a foundational um, 
basis for law enforcement all across the state, and that works very well. What any jurisdiction has the ability to do is make their rules more restrictive in their area. So if they, uh, if King County decides that they don't want to allow any pursuits at all, that's their um, prerogative, and they can do that. Whereas uh, a rural county that doesn't have anybody out at three o'clock in the morning and might want to chase that stolen car, um, they can make that decision too. And so I think the the problem comes in when you try to apply very restrictive standards um, all across the state, which is not reasonable for some of those jurisdictions, which may be more rural than some of the some of the jurisdictions like King County and Everett and Vancouver and places like that. We uh, have been speaking about employment levels and low employment in the last two years now, plus a little bit. Have those laws as well kind of impacted the folks Absolutely. wanting to stay on or Absolutely. come on board? I can tell you that I was at a retirement not too long ago for a, a, a neighboring county sheriff, and um, we were just talking about upcoming things, and these five other guys that are standing there, their leaders in their communities are all police chiefs. They were all standing there looking at me like, what are you talking about? And they all five and said, we all left. We're not dealing with it all anymore. Not my problem. There was a tremendous amount of people that left uh, the business uh, from the top to the bottom when these laws started to change. And many of the people that were within retirement age are like, okay, I've got three more months or I'm over, I'm gone. I'm just not going to watch this thing drop down the hill as it did because you could, s- you could see it coming. The bridge was out, the warning was given, and the train was going down the track and people weren't listening. And, and there were people saying, I'm not going to stay on this train and watch it crash. And a, a lot of people moved moved away from it. Um, so that's where a lot of this is going. The other thing that's kind of interesting that hasn't anything to do with any of these challenging issues is that if you look across the state, and in, in, in our office is much the same right now, um, many of us are at an age where there was a real hiring time and all these people got hired. Well, a lot of us are all at the retiring stage at the same time too, which means you're going to leave, there's going to be a, a, a big group of people you have to fill for and many of us that are hitting retirement were hired at a time when there was a lot of hiring now we're all starting to retire out which i'm in that group for this office that's going to create um, a, a big gap for these guys to have to fill is we have a whole bunch of people getting ready to one after the other each for the next few months uh, moving away and, and we're having to fill for those and it's not that anybody's angry or mad about it it's just that it's time you know, it's retirement time. It's time to move on. It's not, they're not angry at other people. So there's a lot of that going on in the state too. It's just, everything seemed to kind of, I don't know, the bad storm or they call it the perfect storm. I think perfect. The bad storm hit all at once and it's just been real challenging. I think there's other factors involved too, not just bad things, just life. Sure. You know, sure. Changing. Well, and also yet on the last two years of COVID, right. COVID has been, uh, you know, an extreme challenge, not, not just a leadership challenge, but for those first responders who are out there. And I think if you, um, combine a lot of what, uh, from the law enforcement perspective, is an anti-law enforcement or uh, uh, you know anti-criminal justice uh, feeling in the air with the changes in the legislature and some of those things going on. Combine that with the challenges of COVID and everything else for those people who had the ability to retire and, and move on. Uh, many of them have done so, and a lot of people who were, you know, five or ten years in their career decided, you know, I can make just as much money doing some other things, which doesn't have uh, any sentiment against the profession and uh, doesn't have nearly the requirements on you personally. Another great sheriff sit down here, presented by our community credit union, Mason County Sheriff Casey Salisbury, and Under Sheriff Travis Adams. Thanks, guys. Yep. Thank you.